All right, good day. I hope you're having a great day. Listen, I want to tackle this subject that I think uh, a lot of people often uh, don't get to the bottom two, and with good reason, because there is this topic in particular, it seems like, well, it seems like there's a uh, inconsistency in the scripture, which is not the case. Um, but I think a lot of times when there are things like this that uh, people have a hard time balancing out, they don't know what to do with it, and they just choose something and go with it. Um, instead of like getting to the bottom of what this is all about. And in this case, I'm talking about faith versus works. And this is something that I think actually confuses a lot of people because they read these verses. I'm going to quote a couple and you guys will know already when I quote these verses. Oh yeah, that one. Oh yeah, that one. For example, uh, some of the greatest verses in the Bible Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says this, For by grace you have been saved through faith. That's not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. And if you read through the book of Romans, especially at the beginning, when he, he's laying a huge foundation on salvation, it's very clear all throughout that he's saying, look, we're justified by faith. The just shall live by faith. All of this is faith. And he says, it's not of works because if it was works, then we would have earned it. Okay. So that's easy. Yes. We, we look at that and it's great. And then you come to the book of James and James says this, someone will say you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith with your works. I will show you my faith by my works. And then he says, and uh, this is, I'm sorry, James chapter 2, and then verse 20 of the same passage, that was verse 18, but verse 20 says, O foolish man, um, do you not know faith without works is dead? And these two things seem to be in contrast. And I think it actually um, confuses a lot of people because it takes some time to get to the bottom of this. And really to, to get through this. But I just want this to be clear because it's very important. We need to understand something uh, that Paul's saying in, in Romans and Ephesians and what James is saying. And they're both true. They're both equally important. Okay? And I, I, I think I've seen over time people, they kind of fall one way or the other. They don't really take in both and, and live by both, and they're both important, okay? You can't you can't just go that one way and say like, oh, okay, you know what? I'm saved by faith, you know, and that's great, and that's all I need. Because the scripture clearly teaches that there should be works that also come along. As a matter of fact, James rightly makes this point in verse 19 of chapter 2 of James. He says, you believe there is one God, you do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. He's saying, look, this is not just about information and believing information. And so what does it all mean? Okay, so this is there, I'm going to give you the simple version here of all of this so, so that it's very easy to digest. When you put your faith in the Lord, okay, when you come to salvation in Jesus Christ, you do not earn that salvation. You cannot. If you could earn that salvation, then Jesus didn't need to go to the cross, okay? But it's very clear, like, again, read through Romans, right? Because... Um, there is none righteous, no, not one. The wages of sin is death. All of the, the foundational things there, what they basically, what we're taught there is that we are completely uh, in debt to, because of sin. We're enslaved and there's no hope if it were not for God saving us. And 
for us to receive salvation, we literally have to put our faith in God and believe that he, um, what he said he would do, he will do, which is to bring us into his family, to forgive us, and also to believe that Jesus went to the cross to make a payment for our sins, that that we could be forgiven, all of these things, everything that the, the scripture details about the work of God. And like when you read the first three chapters of the book of Ephesians, what, what it details there, so much of what's detailed in Romans, in, in the beginning chapters of the book of Romans also, and all over the New Testament, it's talking about what God did so that we can be his children, okay? And, and it was not just a small thing, right? Jesus going to the cross, all of that. So we put, we believe that, and literally that is what it, what it takes to be saved, right? That's it. But true belief, true faith, any true belief, any true faith will result in works, okay? If you truly believe something, if that's, if that's real, that's what I'm saying, then it will inspire you to actually live a certain way, okay? And if it doesn't, the question is, is it, do you really believe that? Because, I mean, we're talking about the belief that a man went to the cross on your behalf, that he was literally, I mean, he was tortured. He was killed, right? He did it because of love. When you think about all of the things that we we believe in the, because of the scripture and what the gospel is, you know, there's the, the reasonable response to all that Jesus did is, okay, well, if Jesus did that for me, I really don't want to continue in sin. I don't want to, you know, disgrace him. I, I don't want to, um, you know, grieve his, grieve his spirit. I don't want to uh, go against his word because, because of his love for me. And in that way, James is making the, the next point, which is basically, look, you have to understand something. As he says, you have faith, I have works. Show me your faith without your works. I will show you my faith by my works. And he's saying, how are you going to prove that you actually trust God? You, you, can, you cannot prove a belief without action, right? And he's saying, by the way, there should be evidence of your salvation. You should see this, not that you're generating it, it's the outcome of salvation. There should be evidence there. Now, there's a few things that I want to say about this because I know that this is a, an area that the enemy really attacks people a lot, okay? And the more he can confuse you about this, the, the, the more he will because you will always be guessing like, man, am I even saved? How do I even know? I mean, I think I trusted him, you know, uh, uh, ah, you know, all of this stuff, this happens and we have to realize a few things first. Okay. The works that, um, James is talking about here. I think sometimes people get, they get in a real negative mindset. You need to think objectively about this and think about how how your life has changed and what is different in your life and the outcome of Jesus Christ in your life, okay? Before you just jump in there and start saying, well, maybe I'm not saved and I never was saved. Um, before you do that, because the point is here not to just dump condemnation on people and get them to doubt their salvation. It's to be more sure of your salvation, but you should look and you should see the change in your life. You should see the result of Christ, the result of your faith in the Lord, because that does have an effect. It may not be that you're out raising the dead. It may not be that you're healing crowds of sick people and stuff like that, but that you're, you know, being kind and compassionate to people. 
you know, if I go to um, Ephesians chapter 4, when he's talking about walking worthy of the calling uh, of God, he says some of the things that we should be doing is walking in lowliness and gentleness, being long-suffering, bearing with one another in love, seeking to keep unity of the spirit, you know, things like that. Um, those are things that the scripture tells us should be present in our life. Those are the works, okay? So the point is not to just completely doubt yourself. But honestly, if you can't see any evidence of the work of God in your life and the basically the works that God has called you to, the, his effect on you, then there there is place to say, okay, well, wait a minute. Am I living by faith? Am I trusting God? Am I doing this? And listen, this is it is an important thing to sort out because there are people that think that, hey, you know, I can show up to church once a week and that's good enough. That's all I need. But are not actually walking with the Lord and are not actually trusting him. Okay. And so sorting it out is important because you don't want to deceive yourself either. You, we need to be honest here, right? If you're, if you're not walking with the Lord, then you need to look at that and, and figure that out. Okay. What's going on here? And, you know, especially knowing that it, it is such a simple matter of asking the Lord to be your savior and just saying, Lord, enter my life, be my Lord, forgive me of my sins. You know, it is that simple. So anyways, the works, they should be there. Faith without works indeed is dead. That, that doesn't make sense. But we're not earning our salvation. God gives it to us as a gift when we put our faith in him at the beginning. But what comes out of our life after we've trusted in Christ is works. They should be there. So that's the way it works. It's very simple. I'm, I, I hope that it makes sense to you guys. I'm trying not to make a long video, but I can see the timer is already getting there. So um, it's very important, though. This is very important that both are present, you know, that you're trusting in the Lord and that you're living your life for him. So um, I hope that blesses you. I hope that gives you something to consider today. Also, um, please take a minute, leave me a comment, subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet, like the video, you know, all of the things that people always ask you to do on YouTube. And I'll see you again tomorrow. May God richly bless you.